So I'm going to unlock this. Uh, let's just take a quick look. I want to see what the maximum moment was at the end of the film here. So at the top, look at that, 26,000. So if you designed it and you weren't an experienced print designer, you would be designing a wrist stroke, a superstructure for 26 multiplied by some kind of load factor, right? You'd be trying to get 40,000 kids deep in there. And it, it can't even be delivered. The column doesn't have that capacity. It also limits the shear. If you try to, you look at the shear, your column is based, should be based, what happens is you design your column based on these moments, right? And then the maximum moment capacity is based on the class of the moments, not the end of the column. The maximum possible shear that can be delivered into itself, its own column, is two times the class of the moment divided by the height based on statics. So that's a very small shear. If you try to design based on the shear that this would give you, again, it'd be six times higher than the actual shear that you'd be able to get. Do you have to detail the so that the hinge develops at the bottom? Absolutely. So how? Well, you don't you don't detail it so it happens there. You detail it recognizing it will happen. Because if you look at the moment diagram, it's linear. It's the maximum at the top and the bottom is linear. So uh, it will happen there, but you detail it so that when it happens, you can get large rotations to that thing. So it'll naturally always happen at the base? And the top. Oh, and the top. If it's longitudinal, it'll be at the base and the top. Yeah. You can see in this, this isn't so clear because of the type of Spectral, from a spectral analysis, the moment diagram from one actual load, lateral load or reverse weight, will be linear like this, but it'll be straight through like that. And what they're doing is just showing positive values because it's, they're squaring each number, adding them to the square root, so you lose the negatives. That's why you don't see it going the other way. But you see how it's a mat looking at the column, it's maximum here and maximum there. It goes through zero approximately. Okay, um, let's unlock it. Then um, let's run a real earthquake and see what happens. But linear elastic scale. So these are all different stages of analysis that the structures we're working with. So we did a spectral plot, linear elastic base. Um, next is time history. So we're going to solve the problem every 0.02 seconds and then sum all the incremental results and get the response over time from an actual one single earthquake. Doesn't mean it's the worst of all possible earthquakes, but it's one of them. And then we'll do the we'll create a spectral plot from that earthquake and then run the structure again with the real uh, spectral plot. Probably not all of that today because we have only two minutes left, but we'll hopefully run the time history. So they define load case, uh, add new load case. We're going to go up here and see if this time history analysis. And, uh, and even this is interesting. So we can run a time history or we can run it with modal, the way of running we're using the modes and then integrating it. We'll solve it at each time. So we'll do that first set of capacity first. Direct integration should give similar almost identical results. And then nonlinear, which we're not working on right now, we can actually put the moment rotation hinges in at the ends of the column and see how differently it responds. And we'll be doing that in this class. You'll be doing that in the group. So here we'll call this um, EQ. So load pattern is acceleration. Uh, U1, for now I'm going to say the function is ramp time history. Uh, I don't want that to look to be, we'll come back to that and say that. Because uh, I have to bring in the earthquake. So now we go to define functions, just like we did before. But this one I'll bring in from, a, I don't want to type in 2,000 points. So we'll bring it in from a file. Say uh, from a file, add new function, browse, you go find it. So, you know, wherever it is, it's a text, I have a text file, this is the, this is the past the measured uh, earthquake, Loma Prieta earthquake, 1989 earthquake, San Francisco. So, create a east-west direction. So let's try this. Okay, now if we say display graph, it uh, gives me this funny plot, which is not what I want. And so then we can go to view file and show what the data looks like. And it's actually, um, okay, 
this is time, and this is acceleration in t. This is every 0.02 seconds, and there's no, the very first line is data. That's important. So we go back here, see, so this is just single values at 0.05 seconds at 0 0.005. And it's actually just timing and function value. And then header lines to skip is zero, that's correct. If I had some documentation, the top three lines saying what it was, then I would say skip three lines. Now we say this play graph, we look at it, right? That looks more like an earthquake than a straight line. Uh, as I go across, read the bottom here. Um, let's read the, the first one, goes all the way out to, that's a time, about 40 seconds file. And the second value is the acceleration in T. So if I'm like here, you can see it's bouncing around at 0.12, get the maximum 0.25 there, it's about 0.3. This is the ground acceleration, so that's the peak ground acceleration. It is smaller than our design curve. We said peak ground acceleration, that one I created, the ARS curve is 0.7, right? Okay, let's say okay. Uh, let's call it something better than this. Let's call it earthquake one. Let's say okay. And now we have this function, earthquake one. And now we go back to our analysis. <coughs> Scale factor, what is it? 32.2. 32.2, because that was in G. And then you click here, modify. Make sure you do that. And now it's down here. So it's an acceleration. That's an acceleration times entry. That's a ground motion. That's a real earthquake measure. Uh, here we need to change this. Uh, it's 0 0.02. And it's 2,000 steps. So it's going to solve it at 2,000 times everything. Moments, shears, actual sum all the results so that we can see the behavior in the lab. Uh, here we can say, as we said before, the damping is 0 0.05 for each mode. So it solves it at each time, but it uses the mode, the mode shapes to help solve it. Okay, I think we're good. Let's see what happens. Okay, it says it's done. Um, let's look at this. Well, you can do the different things. Look at this first. And this, don't confuse this one with this one. This is the time history analysis. And uh, go to time. And let's say after three seconds. So that's what it looks like, but it's, it's you know, uh, magnified. Go here and click on scale factor, let's say 900. The reason I did that was if I didn't, it's going to automatically scale it each time I click it, and it, and it won't look like it's continuously moving. It will move it and back up looking because it's going to change the scale factor. So here I just at least anchored the scale factor. So this is 900 times larger displacement at three seconds of motion. And this little arrow, I'm just going to click. So this is every 0.02 of a second you see it moving. Create a video too, and then watch it you know, shape. Um, but in terms of getting the maximum, the easiest thing right now, in terms of a hard number, let's just right click on this joint, and that's joint number six. What I'm going to do is ask for the displacement time history to plot to see what it does over the time. So display, show plot function, uh, okay, and define plot function, and then for joint. And join six, and it's displacement in the X. Okay. And you click it over here, and it's going to give you the color. Red. Okay, join six versus ten. And that's it. That's the response of our bridge longitudinally over time. Uh, this is in feet units, and we're at about uh, 0.4 of a foot. So that's interesting. It's 400 times 10 to the minus 3, so it's 24 feet. That's actually, is that pretty similar to what we had from the spectral? A little less, right? We had 26. So it's about 2 thirds. How many do we have left? Okay. Take
think that's it for today. So that's the idea. We ran a, a spectral analysis of actual time history, used modal shapes, so we use a direct translation. And then now, so we're going to continue with this. And then I'll uh, give you a project. So you can